What is up guys, Chris here, and welcome back to another video. Um, yeah. So in today's video, we're not doing a cankerous solve episode, we're actually taking a look at something a little bit different. Many, many months ago, I was sent this little guy, this, uh, this strange rectangular cuboid thingy. This is actually one of the world's first four-dimensional twisty puzzles. This is the 2x2x2x2. Two by two by two by two. This was said to me by somebody called Melinda. She approached me by email and asked me if I wanted to check out the four-dimensional 2x2. Two two. Now, I'm not that good at mathematics and I don't really know what a four-dimensional puzzle is, but I've had this for a few months now and I've not made a video on it, which I'm really sorry about, actually. It took me a, a long time to, to get here, but I've had to wrap my head around this and kind of figure out exactly what it is. So what I'm gonna be doing in this video is trying to explain what this is and kind of take you through the steps for scrambling and solving this and then maybe next week we'll get a canker solve video out and we'll see if I can actually solve it so yeah let's take a look at the the four dimensional two by two by two by two okay so here it is the two by two by two by two thing uh, this is it and it's basically a 3D printed puzzle made up of these tiny little cubic pieces here and they have magnets attached to them and they kind of make up this larger, um, well, cuboid I suppose. I, I don't even know what you would call this. So this cuboid is made up of smaller little cubes which are held together by magnets and this is kind of how the puzzle works. You turn it using the magnets and that's kind of how everything is held together. Because this is a four dimensional puzzle, it's kind of impossible to have any kind of mechanism just because of the whole aspect of the puzzle. So I'm not entirely sure what four dimensional means, but essentially what we have here is a two by two Rubik's cube in the fourth dimension, which means it's one on top of the other and every move that you would make on a normal two by two, such as an R2, affects the other kind of perspective and the secondary, um, well, the fourth dimension, which is the other two by two. I hope that makes sense. I kind of understand it in my head, but I'm probably not explaining it that well, but that's just kind of what I'm getting at right now. So because we don't want to upset the fourth dimension of this puzzle, we have canonical moves. And this is a little bit like a Rubik's Cube in that there are specific moves that you can do that don't upset the rest of the puzzle. If you were to take one piece out of a three by three and flip it around, you wouldn't be able to solve the rest of the puzzle using normal moves. And a similar thing happens here. You have to follow a set of canonical moves which doesn't upset the fourth dimension of the puzzle. So essentially the purpose of this video is to kind of give you guys a basis of what this puzzle is and how it moves and then we can move on to the canker solve once we've established that. So there's six types of moves that you can do that don't upset the fourth dimension of this puzzle. And these are what we call the canonical moves as I've already said. So the first one is called a simple rotation and that's when you take the two cubes apart and you rotate them simultaneously and snap them back. And we know that this is canonical because it doesn't really upset anything and the puzzle is essentially still solved. Uh, we just shift which, which color is going into the middle, but as long as they match up, we're not really doing anything. This puzzle has a number of different solved states. All you have to do is have these solid colors in the middle, and then we have to have matching outside corners, as you can see here. You can even change the outside colors. So instead of having green, we could have purple and pink. And we have these pairings like you would on a normal 3x3. Three three. Orange is opposite red, white is opposite yellow, purple is opposite pink, and green is opposite blue. So essentially, if you do a simple rotation, you're not really altering the solved state of the puzzle. You are kind of just jumbling it around for whatever purpose you have. As long as you stay consistent, you won't have any problems with the canonicity of this puzzle. So the second type of move you have is just a 90 degree twist. And this is a little bit like a Rubik's Cube. Just turn the puzzle 90 degrees, make sure you turn one of the cubes, uh, not two of them, and that's the first kind of actual scrambling move we have here. So obviously you can do both of them, uh, one after the other, you can do 180 degrees, but you just kind of move the puzzle around like you would a 90 degree move on a two by two. 
The next move is also a scrambling move and this is a 180 degree twist on this longer axis, just like that. As you can see, this scrambles it a lot more than the 90 degree move does because it actually alters these middle pieces and it also mixes up the inside a little bit. So you do have to be careful and kind of figure out exactly what it is you're moving when you do these 180 degree slices. So you want to be a little bit careful after this because the rest of the canonical moves get a little bit frustrating. So the fourth one is called the 90 degree axial twist. And essentially what this is, is it's the middle cube being moved 90 degrees. You can obviously do this twice to make an 180 degree twist, but you've got to make sure you keep the outside too completely still. So you can see now how if I was to do a 180 degree twist and then an axial twist, it gets scrambled pretty quickly and it looks very confusing indeed. If you lose track of what you're actually doing, you'll completely forget where you are and you won't be able to get back. So you definitely want to keep an eye out for what pieces are moving where and kind of figure out exactly what it is you're doing with every single move. So the next move is called an arbitrary juxtaposition of outer faces. And essentially what this is, is it's just the taking apart of the puzzle, the spinning around of the cubes however you want. You can get it into any orientation you want essentially and just kind of stick it back together. Um, yeah, it's a pretty interesting way of looking at it. It's kind of confusing, but you can get it back to its solved state just by doing 90 degree moves and simple rotations. So uh, it's just kind of an efficient way to get to where you want to be without really scrambling the puzzle at all. And the final canonical move that I know of uh, is called a gyro rotation. And as I explained before, you have these outside colors and these kind of dictate whether the puzzle is solved or not. And you can change the color of them with this kind of move. And it's very confusing. Uh, I had to write it down as a little algorithm here. I have my little cheat sheet that tells me all these moves. So you want to take apart the top layer and pop it on the bottom. And then you want to do a Y inverted, take the puzzle apart, and then give it a flip like this. And then what do you want to do? You want to flop the puzzle down. You want to open it up, flop it down. And then you want to do the same thing again, open it up and flop it down. And as you can see, now we have red and orange on the outside and the puzzle is still essentially solved. Uh, I haven't actually scrambled it at all. This is still one of the solved states we have because this puzzle has an incredibly large amount of solved states. This is solved, this is solved, this is solved, and that's the same for all of the different colors you might have on the outside. There is one more canonical move that I want to tell you about, but I don't know if I'll be using it unless I really need to when I actually try and solve this puzzle. It's essentially a single piece flip, and if you take out a cube, you can rotate it 180 degrees and then put it back. You have to do 180 degrees or it will ruin kind of the continuity of the fourth dimension here. Uh, and if you actually do a 90 degree flip, the magnet won't let you put it back in like that. So just make sure it snaps when you do it and you'll be golden. So that's all of the different moves you can do on this. Hopefully that made sense to you guys, but essentially you have to follow these rules a little bit like if you were solving a three by three Rubik's cube. And if you do that, you'll be able to scramble and therefore solve this puzzle using, well, the moves that you've used to scramble it. It's a little bit like if you jumble a puzzle like the curvy copter, you won't be able to solve it fully unless you unjumble it. So if you use only canonical moves, you're not going to upset the puzzle and you'll be able to solve it the same way that you scrambled it. I really hope that makes sense. I don't think I fully understand it myself, but what we're going to do now is scramble the puzzle using these simple moves and these canonical moves. And then hopefully in the next video, we'll be able to do a canker solve of this puzzle. Ah, oh, no, I've dropped them. Oh, oh dear. So the huge issue here is trying to figure out exactly how I put this together. Um, do, oh no. Thankfully for this puzzle, there's actually a solution whereby you take apart all the pieces and you put them back together again in a solved manner. Uh, and I'm gonna be doing that for the rest of this video uh, because it fell apart and I don't know how to put it back together. Okay, like I said, I didn't want to scramble it and make it impossible because this puzzle is going to be hard enough as it is. Uh, I just, why did I have to drop it? That's, that's my only question.
There we go. So although I cheated, I managed to get it back into a solved state. So I'm going to actually end this video here before I cause more damage. But hopefully this video has helped to illustrate exactly what this is. Uh, and hopefully a lot of you will have already watched this before I attempt to solve it. Just so you understand what the moves I can do are and how I'm going to have to approach solving it. Uh, I don't think I did a very good job of explaining exactly what this puzzle is and that's because I don't understand it fully myself. Uh, I'm not really a mathematician so I, I kind of don't understand the four dimensions of this puzzle. I just know what moves I've got to do and how to kind of keep it in a solvable state if that makes sense for you guys. Uh, I will leave some links in the description below to Melinda's channel. She actually does a really good job of explaining what this puzzle is, how it moves, and how you should go about solving it. Probably better than I did. Well, definitely better than I did. She made it, so she understands it more than I do. Um, so if you want to know more and you have no idea what I've just talked about for 10 minutes, um, definitely go and check out her channel and the videos that I left below. Um, yeah, yeah, do that actually before you watch the Cancris solve um, because yeah, maybe I should do that too. Huh. Anyway, a huge thank you to Melinda for sending me this puzzle. I'm really excited to try it out actually and to try and solve it for the first time. I just hope it doesn't break apart in my hands again because it took a really long time to solve it uh, just with the single cube. So, so we will see. Uh, definitely keep an eye out for that. I'm really intrigued by this puzzle and I can't wait to see if I can actually solve it or not. Anyway guys, that is it from me for this video. Sorry that this was kind of a little bit of a weird video. I don't actually know how this is gonna turn out because I just have babbled for the longest time, but that is it from me. I hope you have a really awesome day. Remember to like and comment below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have an awesome day.